This video is going to be covering the evidence for evolution in the form of atavisms in the fossil record. Now, I'll start with atavisms. Now, an atavism is a trait that our ancestors, or that an organism's ancestors exhibited that became inactive, yet, because of the way genetics works, it's still present in our genome, and can manifest itself. Now, as an example of this, it's commonly accepted that birds came from reptiles. Um, birds have beaks, they don't have teeth, whereas reptiles do. If a bird were to display teeth, and it still had the genes for making teeth, it would be called an atavism, if the teeth became um, reactivated and manifested themselves in the bird. Now, atavisms provide very powerful evidence for evolution, simply because it is the only explanation for why birds still have the genes for making teeth, whales still have the genes for making legs, and things like that. Um, if, if animals were created in present form, and they had never mixed anything like that, an animal would have only the genes necessary that it needs as opposed to random genes of other organisms. It makes absolutely no sense. Now, some of the most fundamentalist creationists can look at this evidence and say, well, so what? The same god that designed birds also designed reptiles, so he just gave them the same genes. And while that, on the surface, may seem like a semi-plausible argument, when you actually examine the evidence, it becomes really apparent that it's not. Now, this is because atavisms only display between organisms which are phylogenetically or ancestrally related. You don't get, um, if an organism is not ancestral to the organism in question, you won't see any of its traits displayed. For example, um, the same god designed, according to what they're saying, the same god that designed birds also designed mammals. So, birds should have the genes for making nipples or mammals should have the genes for making feathers. But when we look, we don't find that. We never find amphibians with feathers, either. We find whales with legs, but why don't we ever find fish with legs? See, so it's for these reasons that upon careful scrutiny, the, the same god, same genes thing doesn't exactly work out, because we only find the same genes in organisms which are phylogenetically related to each other. And this is only explainable by common descent. So powerful examples of atavisms are found in, in whales and dolphins being found with um, full legs that is complete with femur and tibia. Again, common descent is the only way to explain this. Why else would whales and dolphins have the genes for making legs? Um, you can also see chicken with teeth. Um, in human babies, you can even see tailbones and tails with, with fully articulating discs and under skeletal muscle voluntary control. These are actual tails. Um, also, there are extra nipples found in um, men and women, which of course always follow the milk lines. Um, for an example of this, um, take a look at the images that I'm showing you. These are actually from Frank Netter, who's a, if you've ever done any sort of anatomy, I mean, this is from Netter's Atlas. Um, again, these always follow the milk lines. Um, think of a dog or a pig and how their nipples are set up. That's the same exact thing. And again, the only way that this is possibly explainable is by common descent. Now next is the fossil record, and I want to address two particular things with this. Um, first I'll be addressing the predictions which are made by the fossil record, and secondly I'll be addressing it as a whole. Now here is a very big distinction between creationism and evolution. Creationism says that everything was created at the exact same time. As such, we should find everything intermingled in the fossil records. That is, it, we should find um, poodles buried below dinosaurs, below trilobites, below all sorts of ancient fossils and things like that. We should find man with dinosaurs and everything all mixed together. Evolution contends that one form of life gave rise to another, and as such, there should be set times when we start to see these newer, more evolved organisms, such as birds and mammals, appearing. Man and dinosaurs never lived together, so we shouldn't find them near each other in the fossil record. Because, keep in mind, man evolved after dinosaurs, so finding a human being below a dinosaur fossil or with a dinosaur fossil would completely disprove evolution. Now, note that this is completely different than what creationism predicts, which is that everything would be mingled together. So, as such, it's an important test that we can do to see which one is correct. Yet, despite the hundreds and hundreds of years of digging, we simply don't find this. The false record is amazingly predictable in the sense of when we are looking for a, predic for a particular um, transitional form, we know the time that it evolved and we know the location, we know the exact depth to go to to dig, and most of the time we found it. Um, this can, it is particularly evidenced by um, Tiktaalik, the transition between um, fish and reptiles. This was a fish with a wrist. Now, another amazing predictive thing about the fossil record in evolution is that we can predict exactly what we should not find. For example, birds and mammals both evolved from reptiles. As such, there's no mixing between the two. We predict, according to evolution, that we will never find a half-bird, half-mammal transitional fossil. And we never do. 
Now, the fossil record is also um, spatially arranged, too, in the horizontal fashion, in the sense of we know that things such as complex mammals, such as man and elephants, evolved relatively recently. Now, according to plate tectonics, we also know that the islands, such as Australia and New Zealand, broke off from the mainland before man and elephant evolved. As such, we know that we will never ever find a, a, a complex mammal fossil on an island. Why? Because they were never there. Because the islands broke off before they evolved. As such, they had no way of getting there. When we look at the fossil record, that's exactly what we find. There are no complex mammal fossils on remote islands, regardless of how large they are. Now here is another important distinction between evolution and creationism, is that the fossil record, if evolution is true, should depict characters in the process of evolving. Um, if creationism is true, they should be all fully formed, and anything that would be a transitional form would simply just be kind of like a mosaic mismatch of, or um, mismatch rather, of fully formed features. When we look at the fossil record, this is the complete opposite of what we find, and whale evolution give you, gives a real perfect example of this. So evolution tells us that, that whales and dolphins and things like that evolved from um, terrestrial four-legged mammals. Um, something that's interesting to note is that, that land mammals today are divided into two, um, two groups. There's the, the baleen whales, who are essentially toothless, and then there are all the other toothed mammals. Um, now something interesting has to happen for an animal, animal to go from the, the land to the water. There are a couple things, but many of them can be found in the skull alone. One thing that has to happen is that hearing on land and hearing underwater are completely different. As such, the middle ear needs to completely change. Now, in addition to this, we also have to change the nostril location. Um, whales and porpoises and things like that have the nostril location on top of the head, whereas um, their, their land-going um, ancestors had nostrils like where we do, at the tips of the snouts and whatnot. So evolution predicts that any transitional fossil that we would find, we should see the middle ear changing as well as the nostril position changing. And if we don't find that, evolution's wrong. So when we actually take a look at these transitional fossils, we get just that. Just as evolution predicts. We can see the nostrils changing from the form of like Pachycetus to Rhodocetus to Adocetus to modern beluga whales. We can perfectly see the nostrils migrating from the front of the snout up to the top of the skull. Furthermore, we can also see the middle ears evolving from one that's very good to hearing on land to one that's excellent to being used underwater, just as evolution predicts. Now, as if that wasn't enough, on top of these two things, we also can see the fins and, and um, fore and hind legs devolving and evolving as well. So, I mean, it's perfectly as what's predicted by evolution. Creationism can simply not explain this. The predictions of evolution are fulfilled constantly every day as it is the best, most accurate explanation for the evidence and for the world around us. Now something else that's very interesting that we can see through these fossils is that we can also see the development of echolocation. Um, the melon in, in toothed whales, and it's only toothed whales by the way that, that echolocate, directs the sound outward, whereas the lower jaw kind of acts as a receptor and transmits the sound back to the head. And we can see this perfectly evolving through these fossils. And when you take this into account with things such as Archaeopteryx and Tiktaalik and other transitional forms such as that, it becomes clear that yes, life on Earth did evolve over time. Um, for more and yet again, we see that evolution is the only explanation which fully explains all of the evidence.